Obi TV here from Old Bakery Studios in Truro. I'm here now with indie rockers, the Velvet Hands. I get this feeling. Nothing will leave it. I get this feeling. with their track This Feeling. I'm here with Kath from The Old Bakery. Tell us a little bit about how this came about. What is OBTV? Sure, so we're down in the green room, which is backstage of The Old Bakery, the venue underneath Old Bakery Studios. And we've been running this venue for three, four years and all the shows stopped because of lockdown in March. So now in um, October, we find ourselves being um, the recipients of some Arts Council England Cultural Recovery Fund uh, grant money. And we decided rather than doing straight up uh, live streaming that we should do something a little bit more different and incorporate a little bit more of what's here because there's so much uh, more creativity here than purely the music. So we've now come up, haven't we, with this yeah. old bakery television show, OBTV. So we've got a range of different freelancers working on the show. Um, do you want to talk a bit about who's working on the show? We've always relied on the freelance community because all the work is here and there, a few gigs a month and really and different uh, dates and hours. There's a really nice feel here. Everyone's kind of knows each other and either has a space here or knows someone who knows someone. It's very, corn it's very Cornwall. Everyone knows each other. And yeah. That's a really nice feel about that. And there's just a real range of, by the time you look at all the skills we've all got between us all, we can pull off something pretty um, fun and showcasing all the art culture music that's not only in Cornwall but here in Truro and bring a yeah, really exciting yeah. range of guests on over the next few months, can't we? So what are the plans kind of moving forward? So we've got a few of these coming, more to be announced, but yeah. what kind of plans have we got going on further from this? Okay, so with um, the Old Bakery TV will take up a fair amount of time over the winter. We're also running uh, 50 seated cabaret layout uh, intimate nights. Okay. So the space is so big, by the time you get 50 in, it's the audience are really happy with the safety of the place and it's such a nice atmosphere with table service as well. It's just a lovely night out. But the lead singers of a few well-known bands are going to do a night where you wouldn't normally see them be quite so laid back and chatty. 
Uh, so that'll be really special. So we've got that, and then we'll see where the TV show goes. Like everything here, it's all pretty organic and evolves. So we'll see what we can do with it. I mean, everything here evolves pretty naturally. This whole, yeah. the only reason I found about this was because you came and knocked on my studio door and was like, I've got this idea. So I mean, <laughs> it all comes about very organically. About right. So I'm looking forward to seeing what comes from it. Definitely. Yeah. Um, she's just played a really atmospheric and very haunting set, which I hope you all really enjoyed. How would you describe your music? How would you kind of describe your sound? I get asked this quite often by people and I don't really know how to explain it. It's, I take a lot of inspiration from different singers. I started off doing a lot of soul singing uh, at James Beyonce, Aretha Franklin, but I also go down the road. I'm a huge Iron Maiden fan. Oh, amazing. <laughs> so I go down the Bruce Dickinson line. I try and hit his high notes. Whether or not I get it right, <laughs> you never know. But yeah, it's hard. I'd say probably country. Um, some Dolly Parton in there, I guess. Um, yeah, it's difficult to put a pinpoint on it, really. Yeah, so it's basically a huge mix of everything it's in a really me. nice it's, way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just no, me. it's nice. Yeah. You were summed up earlier as like a gothy place country music, and I was like, I quite like that. It's a nice summary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's another thing. Like, people don't expect me to sing what I do. Yeah. When I look the way I do, I suppose it's a stereotype of yeah. looking like a metalhead. I must, that must be my only thing that I like. 
but no, completely different. No, it's fun. <laughs> I like, really enjoyed your set and I think it will be, like it showcases something completely different. Thank Going you. along those lines, obviously you're doing backing vocals for the Velvet Hands. Um, yeah. How did that come about? And are you excited for like the upcoming releases and stuff? Yeah, I mean, they're not down this way very often. So when Julian, their manager, got in contact with me about doing backing vocals, I jumped in on that because it was, well, it was an exciting new challenge. I've done backing vocals for bands in the past, but nothing of this level. It's been exciting and interesting to add like a female voice into the little thing they've got going on. Cause yeah, <laughs> I've heard the track and it, it's really nice to hear like a more like haunting female voice in it because it's normally very heavy and it's it's nice to hear that like different tonality that you bring to it. So that's really it's exciting. It's quite a contrast. I didn't yeah. know how it was going to work out at first, but we just jammed it and it sounded pretty cool. So as this episode comes out, you've just released your debut EP. How did that come about? What was the process of writing and recording and how was that like for you? So I started writing this EP you know, it's like two, two years ago maybe. It's taken me a long time. Um, I've only just sort of started doing things as a solo artist. I was always in a duo or a band or just behind the scenes doing backing vocals. Uh, never been sent a stage. So it's been a huge thing for me to write this and um, the subjects of mental health that it's all about and coming out with it, it's been exciting. Um, so yeah, I started writing it a while ago and I decided to get it recorded. I recorded it at Ocean Studio in Bodmin with a good friend of mine called Chris Morris uh, from the band Paper Lace back in the day. Oh, yeah. And um, <laughs> My good friend Jamie Rotherham helped me master it. So it's been a really, well, tiring process and trying to do everything with social distancing. It's been yeah, a nightmare, course. but so worth the wait and I'm excited to share it with everybody.
Ryan from the Velvet Hands. Hey guys. Hello. How are you? Yeah, Very good. Good. Very good. I'm all right, thank you. Excited to be here. Excited to actually have this OBTV like rolling. Um, you've obviously made massive waves on the airways with BBC, like Radio One, Radio X. When did you feel like you kind of found the sound of the Velvet Hands? It was the first album, wasn't it, that we released? Yeah. What two years ago now? That we recorded in Falmouth with Ben from the Golden Drag, so he like produced it. Uh, and then and we'd got like little bits of Radio One. Um, and then, yeah, I remember we was driving home to a gig. It might have even been a gig here, because we was on the way home, and then just got through that it was Radio 1, like, album of the week, yeah. like Hugh Stevens. Uh, and then since then, it's kind of been constant. We can just stick that yeah. at the top of the press release, nice. and they have to play it now. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, what's he called? Um, from Radio X, what's he called? John Kennedy. John, John Kennedy, Kennedy's yeah. like, been supporting us since, I don't know, the last two or three years. Everything we've put out, he's put straight into the explosion. Uh, pretty much the exposure playlist everything we we put out as well did a session for him as well so i think he's one of those guys that once he gets behind a band he really commits to it actually lamac as well lamac played our first he played trains didn't he as well he's, yeah. played, he's played everything since, since trains then. as well so yeah they're like they're, they've all been pretty good to us to be honest amazing um, in terms of finding the sound i think we sort of just bumbled into yeah. the sound it just, like, just, yeah, just, it, yeah. it just happened we yeah. always used to just like buy cds on the way home from college and it was just like Rolling Stones and Strokes yeah. and Libertines, and then we went, we'll just do that. So what kind of things drive your songs? Like, what do you, what do you feel like you write about? Is it news, politics? Like, what, what do you end up writing about that makes you an album? It's kind uh, of, I, yeah, about yeah, you. I guess the, the album was like everything that led up, in, up to that point in our lives, basically. Yeah. Because it was sort of the songs we'd written between sort of 17 and 20. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's kind of the same, isn't it? It's like, full out, like, a recent single we put out was just about a man we met in the pub who just annoyed us, and what you can do, you can either cry about it, or, or you write can... write a song write. while crying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's your big dream? Like, where do you see yourself ending up in five years, for example? I mean, if COVID wasn't a thing, what would what would be the plan? Uh, there's some good park benches in, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, in Regent's Park that are comfortable, so. Uh, five years' time, I guess. It'd be nice to be doing, like, some... O2, we Wembley, yeah, the moon, yeah, all of it. <laughs> nice. O2, O2, the moon, yeah, that'd be good. If you had a, if you had a fest, like a festival dream lineup, you have three bands, you can choose whoever you want. Who would be on your bill? Who would you want to be playing alongside? When you say what, you can go. I'll go for Oasis. Heinz, <laughs> who's on top? Oasis. Heinz can do that, and then maybe us. Yeah, we can. Yeah, that's the dream. Nice, cool. Right. Oh, I love that. Final question. <laughs> When was the right time for you guys to move to London? Because you don't live in the southwest anymore, but you did for a very long time. Being in London now makes sense because we can yeah. see some bigger bands and like, because it's only it's only small really. Like all the bands drinking like four or five pubs. If we if we'd moved up when we was like seventeen, we would have just like Irritating pissed everyone too, off, yeah. just like yeah. <laughs> so which is we did that anyway, just in Cornwall. So, yeah, yeah. And so when you pulled that, we went to that uh, farmer thing. And you poured on it like half a pint onto Ben Woods. I did, yeah. Yeah, Ben's actually just put up with us yeah. through, <laughs> through his life. Because when we first met him, we were like 17 and he was like in his 20s. And yeah, we've just like annoyed him throughout. And Solid. And he's, he's, he's still got there. Stockholm syndrome now. Like, yeah, he he's like, oh, so he used to take care of us, he can't leave now. Yeah. <laughs> Ben's actually about to play the next performance. So nice little segue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the Golden Drags are actually going to be playing a live performance for us now. So over to them. been the first of me but if anything it felt more like the last and nothing i could say was gonna make you stay around to see me grow so ugly and so fast do you really want to waste your life well i think you'd make a good ex-wife it might have been the first of me but if anything it felt more like the last After 
moments of contemplation I finally accept Things aren't going as I planned I awake in the night Golden down with perspiration My heart sinks as a dark phase I remember where I am And every crumbling building Tells of how we forget anything To treat us well It might have been the first of me But I accept it wasn't going as I planned To swim so good, but I'll be damned if I'm letting myself drown. Card shuffling for a better hand is still hopeless if the cards remain face down. And if actions speak louder than words, making a departure can't be so absurd. I never learned to swim so good, but I'll be damned if I'm letting myself drown. First of me, but if anything, it felt more like the last. And nothing I could say was gonna make you stay around to see me grow so ugly and so fast. And without stepping out of line, maybe a second child will be mine. It might have been the first of me, but if anything, it felt more like the last. Hello. Hello. <laughs> We've already had a pre-chat chat, so I feel like this is going to be a lot easier than it may well have been before. Um, or harder. Or, yeah, or harder, I don't know. Um, I have a few questions, obviously. Um, what inspires you to make? What inspires you to create music? Why are you writing? I don't know. It's just something that I've always had an interest in, and I guess I've gotten to a point where I've narrowed my life choices so much that I don't really feel much like doing anything else. Fair enough. Like, <laughs> so I guess like it's just a natural way it's to a go. Bit, it just feels a bit like, I, can't, I just can't be bothered retraining, so. So you produced the first Velvet Hands record. Mm -hmm. um, they talked about you, and I guess gather you're quite good friends. Um, but, <laughs> well, I like to think you're quite good friends. Um, so you produced their album. Do you prefer the production side of things? Do you produce your own music? What's your I, kind of standpoint? I really, I, yeah, I really, love, I really love music production. Um, yeah, my, my favorite, I guess it's like a big part of the writing process for me is to be in in amongst like bits of equipment and to be able to like it's like writing an idea down as soon as you have it but you're writing it down with a keyboard or a guitar and it just yeah. builds up the arrangement and you kind of get to really live in a song and I think that's kind of where I'm kind of at my happiest with making music is in that sort of self-production yeah, so side of things. Kind of doing I love working with other people as well. What's the plan with the Golden Dregs? So we, we're meant to have a pretty decent spring and summer 
up until all the cancellations, we just got a, a new booking agent, and she's really, she's really cool. And we had a European tour and oh, a bunch of festivals yeah. that were meant to happen, and they've all been pushed to next year, and it's just kind of waiting, hoping that that starts to come back together. Yeah, completely. But in the interim, I've just been working on new material, and now I've got backed up albums, I guess. So I won't have to write for a decade. <laughs> got loads of stuff on your belt. <laughs> kinda, kinda not. Obviously, because of COVID, you're another person who's become made redundant from a job, mm -hmm. and you were originally in London and now you're back here. So yeah. how's that transition been for you? Yeah, I mean, I don't feel hard done by. It's been quite, like, it's been interesting as a, like, ex you know, the experience of just, yeah, having all that time for writing and just kind of reevaluating your goals a little bit. Yeah, you've been able to almost make and create full time that you're just not normally able to do. Yeah, it turns out I love not working. <laughs> I always thought so it was just, like, yeah, didn't, re didn't really realise. So, yeah. Well, amazing. Thank you for having a chat. Thank uh, you very much. Hello, I'm Joe Coleman and I am a songwriter based in Truro at the Old Bakery. Uh, so I originally started off in graphics, I did a degree at Bristol in uh, graphic design and then it was once I got my studio job, I, I did that for about three or four years. Before even discovering sign writing was a thing, I, I didn't know that was a job before. So I um, started dabbling in sign painting and then, yeah, I think once I took it up and painted my first sign, I realised I was, I was racing home to paint more signs and, and spending more and more time doing that. And I thought, why, you know, why am I racing back to do this? Yeah, I went down to three days a week at work doing graphics work and then two days a week sign writing. And within two weeks of doing that, I, I decided I wanted to do it full time. So I left my job and took up sign writing and started Coleman Sign and Design. I work on mainly fascias for shops and, and things. Um, with, with the exception of some mural work and some other smaller signs. But yeah, the largest thing I've had in this studio was yeah, a couple of weeks ago, I did a sign for an antiques business based in Dorset. And um, that stretched pretty much the length of the whole studio. So I painted that in a couple of sections and then transported it. My main inspiration comes from plenty of books I have and other artists in my field, basically. It's all about passing it on to the next generation. So. Uh, craftsmen like Dave Smith's Amazing Glass Gilder. There's Joby Carter who runs a Steam Fair. Yeah, that sort of fairground art world is really, really interesting. And then, yeah, just to, to other signwriters out there doing their own thing with their own styles. Like, yeah, Cooper over in, in Bristol is a big inspiration. I think I like how varied all the jobs are. I never really know what I'm going to get called for next. I, I sort of was doing that big fascia in here a few weeks ago and then yeah I'll be working on like a tiny like a briefcase or I've painted some people's musical instruments. Yeah just really really interesting and random briefs from really interesting and random clients I guess. My social media handle is Coleman Sign and Design. Yeah, I'm on Facebook and Instagram but that's a good portfolio of all of my work in and around Truro. I'm now here with Sheila Van Lu, who's a bit of a Cornish legend. She knows loads about the local music scene. She's a huge music fan. Um, it's exciting to be with you and have a big chat about the music industry in Cornwall. So how has working within the local scene been? How, how have you found it over the years, I guess? Well, I started when I was 14, so that's way back in the 60s. Um, and I used to put on local bands in the town hall down in Foy. Uh, because nothing happened in Foy. All we had was um, a youth club, which was affiliated to the church, and I'm afraid that didn't really gel with me. <laughs> so I thought, oh, I'll start doing it myself then. So I used to book local bands, um, and the ones who are still surviving, not playing anymore, obviously, but um, still great friends with most of them. Um, and yeah, so my love of the Cornish music scene started way back then uh, and it was great in the 60s um, it was I, I suppose fairly solid throughout the 70s 80s um, but I think this last 10 years it's just exploded 
and uh, we've gone national. You know, we've got so many great bands and musicians in Cornwall. Um, and we're sending them off to the rest of the country because they're that good and we want to share them. What have been your top three performances? Gosh, well, Comedy's Easy, Kerno King. Okay. We've had some great comedy shows here, but I think Kerno King, because he's a local legend, uh, he's in a BAFTA award-winning film, um, and he's just stayed himself. He's still Ed from Roach, you know, he's very... <laughs> Grounded and fabulous and, and we love him and his show here was just fantastic. Um, oh, music's really tough and I oh, I want to pick a local band, it's, but it's hard because they will all kill me if I don't pick <laughs> them. Because we've got so many, we've got so many terrific local bands. Um, so I'm going to choose something that's a bit different. Okay. It's it's also it's theatrical and it's musical. Okay. You and it was two boxes. fun. Yeah, three because it was fun as well. Oh um, my God. And it's the amazing Pulp Friction, and they were here. Can't remember if it was the end of last year or early this year, and they just the place was packed, and they just blew the roof off. Um, and you didn't have to actually be a Tarantino fan. Maybe. Theatre was something a little bit different again. Um, scary Little Girls, okay. who came, I think, coming up to Christmas last year and did one of their kind of burlesque cabaret kind of storytelling shows, which was a completely different audience, I think, for the Old Bakery, which is what the Old Bakery is all about as, as far as we're concerned, um, because they bring a whole raft of different things to different audiences. Yeah, of course. Um, so I wanted to chat a little bit about like your history with radio. They're absolutely vital, absolutely vital because you know we've got the BBC and they're fabulous with their um, introducing, yeah. but I think the local stations, the smaller stations, can really if they've got a show that they can focus on our local music, it's vital that they do that and help to promote those bands. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for chatting with us.
job Got 50,000 things I couldn't dream of Got a haircut, a 